For a few years now I've been pining over being able to shoot panoramics with the Hasselblad X-Pan, but it's stupidly expensive. Expensive like I'll have to take to the streets to sell my body again. Expensive. The X-Pan with a 45mm lens goes for around £3,000 on eBay, and while I could maybe justify the price to myself after a long weekend on acid, I instead decided to plump for a more DIY approach. I decided to build my own X-Pan. If you click this video then you probably already know, but for those of you who just came to look at my pretty face, I'll quickly explain. The Hasselblad X-Pan, or Fujifilm TX-1 as it was otherwise known, are 35mm film cameras that basically expose two frames simultaneously, creating a panoramic image. I love this aspect ratio, and the X-Pan is one of the few ways you've ever been able to do it in camera. The issue is that it's an old film camera with old electronic parts, meaning its days are numbered just like my partner Helen's days are numbered in this relationship, and I just can't justify blowing thousands of pounds on something that could just die tomorrow. Just like my partner Helen in this relate. Oh, that's too dark even for me. So how did I go about making my own X-Pan? Well, you could just go around shooting images normally and then crop in post, but there's a certain element of guesswork to this, and you can't frame up the images perfectly there and then through the viewfinder. But there are these things called anamorphic lenses, and without boring you with the scientific detail that I couldn't explain to you, even if I wanted to anyway, these are basically lenses that squash the image from the sides and make everything tall and skinny. Which is why I like standing in a mirror naked and pointing this thing at myself all the time. The idea being that you then later, as we say in the industry, de-squeeze the image in post. What you're left with is a widescreen-esque image. Widescreen being the operative word, because these lenses are really made for cinematography, and they're usually stupidly expensive. But these... Shiri... Shiri... shiri -ui, Shiri... Tsui... Anamorphic branded lenses have come onto the market in recent years, meaning that APS-C peasants like us are able to take a crack at panoramic photography. Or anamorphic photography, as it's probably better known. I decided to buy this and an X-Pro2 to pair it with, mimicking the X-Pan in form factor as much as possible which I only slightly managed because the lens protrudes out far more than it does on the X-Pan. But I'm used to being unique due to unnatural protrusions, so I just decided to go with it. The X-Pro2 anamorphic combination is a fun one, but similarly to the whole just cropping post bro argument, there's an amount of guesswork here too. See, with an actual X-Pan, you can actually see the panoramic shot that you're taking through the viewfinder. There's no guesswork in hoping that you got your image straight or the composition correct. Compositionally, what you see through the viewfinder is how the photograph will turn out. With this anamorphic style of photography, what you're seeing is the weird squashed image that you hope will look better once you de-squeeze it in post. Another good excuse for me taking terrible images, but it genuinely does take a little bit of luck and a little bit of guesswork with this method. Once you're done shooting, you can take the anamorphic images into any software that can change the dimension of images. Multiply the width by 1.33 for horizontal pictures, and for portrait images, you multiply the height by 1.33. The software that can do this for you automatically, or you can just automate the process in Photoshop. Once this is complete, you're now left with an anamorphic cheap ripoff of an X-Pan photograph. But if you're a true X-Pan snob, like I assume we all are here, then you might have noticed that the aspect ratio isn't quite the same as an X-Pan. You see, the anamorphic aspect ratio is just shy of being 2.4 to 1, whilst the X-Pan is 65 to 24. Round it all the way down, that is 2.7 to 1. How much difference does that 0.3 make? Well, if we place the images side by side, we can see that it actually makes quite a substantial difference. And now let's layer these images on top of one another. The 2.7 to 1 just seems perfect. It's not so narrow that you feel as though you're a kid again looking through the letterbox of that neighbour girl and wondering where her pee pee is, but it's just interesting enough to fit an interesting amount of scene into the shot and allow both foreground and background giving you a chance to have the subject and the location in the image. There's also that nagging feeling of not getting the true X-Pan experience with this method either. I won't shoot this way because I don't enjoy it, I want to get the settings right in camera and then just upload all my images onto the computer to back them up that way. I don't want to be messing around on Photoshop and Lightroom and messing with colours and de-squeezing images and showering all the time. It's just not my style. We could just make do with the X-Pro2 anamorphic combo, but I have since decided to finally go and do what I said I've been wanting to do on this channel for a long time now, and let's just go out and buy a digital X-Pan, a medium format camera, the Fujifilm GFX 50R. I love this camera so much that I think I might bin my current fiancé and marry it instead. 
Sure, this thing won't remind me to put trousers on in the morning before I go outside, but she can't take X-Pan shots, so it's a bit of a toss-up. I've had my eye on the 50R for a long time now, and I was worried that I wouldn't enjoy it because it's considerably bigger and chunkier than the APS-C camera due to the bigger sensor. I swore I'd never go back to full frame or medium format in this case due to the size of the lenses and the bodies itself, it's just a lot of weight to carry around. But this camera due to its sensor size is due to shooting the coveted 65 to 24 aspect ratio, the exact aspect ratio of the X-Pan. We can see the exact image that we're getting in the camera due to the image being fully digital so there's no post-processing and guesswork involved here, it's exactly what I wanted. The style of the X-Pan with all the modern conveniences of a digital camera slapped on there. Just taking my GFX 50R through this tunnel. <laughs> The issue being that the 50R is only slightly less expensive than an X-Pan body, but I trust that we'll get more longevity out of the 50R. One, because it's not as old, and two, because mirrorless cameras just have less moving parts in them, which hopefully means that there's less to go wrong, which is exactly the reason that I don't move around too much. It does mean that I couldn't actually afford a lens for the damn thing though, which is pretty typical for new GFX owners apparently. Luckily there's plenty of inexpensive vintage glass you can throw on there, which will only help add to the whole filmic style I'm trying to emulate with these Fuji cameras anyway. I decided to buy a couple of cheap zooms to help me learn the focal lengths I'll most often use on medium format. I bought the Minolta 35-70 and a Tokina 70-210mm f4-5.6. Zoom lenses back then were miles behind on primes, but according to the vintage lens community, these lenses are pretty good, even if they are just mere zooms. I like these lenses because they're small and it just decreases the weight of the overall kit, but it's worth pointing out that this is due to them being 35mm lenses, although they do manage to cover the GFX sensor for the most part, due to it not being a particularly large sensor by medium format standards. There is some vignette in here and there, but zooming in or stopping down slightly normally sorts that out. They'll do for now while I decide on which GFX lenses I'm going to pair the 50R with. So there we are. After resisting the urge for years to buy an expensive piece of camera equipment just to shoot panoramics, we've come full circle to a time where I've bought an expensive piece of camera equipment just to shoot panoramics. Isn't life wonderful?